Welcome to a short video about that mean units made about the history of English in America, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Eng England English pilgrims landed in November 1920. When they arrived, they discovered Native Americans who have lived there for 30,000 years already. The pilgrims built a settlement called Plymouth Plantation, and that is where the story begins. The pilgrims spoke British English arriving there, but after a series of events, the language evolved, as you guys will see in this video. It is said that one of the natives boldly walked up to the village, that uh, the village of the settlers, and said hello to one of the settlers there. That man picked up the English word from settlers, um, English settlers who were fishermen. His name, his native name is Squanto, and he actually helped um the pilgrims survive over the harsh winters. Um, 80% of the people who arrived in Mayflower actually died that winter. Squanto was later kidnapped by the English and taken back to England to show his different way of living. After the pilgrims managed to sell in, they wanted a new name for the unseen animals and foods. Some of these names are reflected from the native language. Some words are copies of Squag and Wiggum, which we don't use anymore. Weirdly enough, the settlers borrowed very few words from the native, in comparison to the English borrowed from the French, Latin, and etc. English settlers, rather than borrowing words, they try to recreate their own words. The, pil the pilgrims taught English with a book called New England Primer. This was actually a religious book to teach the kids the English language. They took immense care in properly teaching English. This set the tone for the English language spreading across the U.S. However, not everything went the seller's way, as even in other countries, other parts of America, um, countries controlled some of the language. For example, the Swedish came up with Delaware, and Dutch came up with New Amsterdam, which was later renamed New York City in 1664. Another way the English language evolved was through dialects. For example, the language in New England started to break apart slash drift away from the English spoken in England. This was the beginning of the tomato-tomato problem. Meanings of certain words have also shifted. For example, lumber in Britain, um, also known as garbage, um, in American that is called it is known for lumbers, um, as in cut timber. In seventeen seventy five, thirteen colonies had declared their independence as they say in classical English. The second U.S. president, John Adams, wrote that everyone in the same, is the same and cannot be excluded just because of the way their speech betrayed their origins. This was also the birth of the democratic idea that, that anyone could also become president. This was in, this was in Massachusetts. English in America even got a new name. The English spoken was no longer King's English, it was a people's English. Noah Webster in 1828 published the first American Dictionary of English Language, as well as his blue-backed spelling book, which taught five generations of American children how to spell and read. Practice was said to have changed the language uh, with, with far more emphasis through the words. In 1804, Americans purchased so-called Louisiana from the French for three cents per acre and doubled the size of the country overnight. Pres President Jefferson sent out an expedition of 45 men under the leadership of Captain Mayweather from St. Louis to Louisiana, which they discovered 200 new English words. These were mostly names of object objects 
or descriptions of words, such as mockingbird, which explains itself. The French also left their mark along the Mississippi as well. Towns like Baton Rouge, St. Louis, Lafayette, and New Orleans, as well as city names ending in Ville, Greenville, Jacksonville, etc. The French may pronounce St. Louis as St. Louis, but in the US, you would say St. Louis, otherwise everyone will give you the looks. This goes the same for Ville, as you would say Ville instead of Ville. Hotel was taken from the French as well. Hotels is where a lot of gambling took place. Gambling brought up quite a few words to the American language in the middle of the 19th century. Words such as the buck, which came from the buck-handled knife used while playing cards, together with gambling. Drinking spread as well, which added more slang words to the language. Some new words which came from drinking were bartender and saloon. West expansion was the cause of land disputes between natives and settlers, which caused friction between both groups to increase. English started to adopt more words and literal translations from the native languages. Words like scalp were giving more threatening meaning. Long time no see is one of the examples of the translations settlers use from native languages. Travelers to the West experienced rough journeys alone in the wilderness. Around that time, the gold rushes started to emerge. This introduced quite a few words to, into the English language. Arrival of the railroad in the 19th century opened up the country and created industry that, that gave West Coast of US most characteristics vocabulary. A person that developed the idea of transferring cattle over to the areas rather than using them only locally introduced himself as the real McCoy, meaning the real thing, which went to live on, as well as he introduced the term cowboy in a new meaning. Language of the West became the standard idea of what American English is like, completely overtaking the proper speech of the East. Ho however, the black slaves in the South of US spoke a different language compared to the white controlled Wild West. These slaves developed a language to talk with each other from different countries as well as their masters mainly in cotton plantations. This language was English which was heavily influenced by the African ways of talking. Words like bananas, voodoo, Animal names, etc., were all introduced into English language by Gula. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for listening.